Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to get the look of old galvanized metal using inks and um, a little bit of elbow grease. Well, not very much. It's a lot of fun and we're going to use stamps today from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com and use the coupon code Lindsay17 to save 20 percent off your peg stamp order. So what we're going to do here is use some of the new Distress Oxide inks, but don't worry if you don't have these, use um, the old Distress inks or whatever dye base inks you have for this. I'll kind of tell you how to do it with other stuff as we go along so that you don't feel like you're missing out if you don't have these because I know they're new and um, you know you might not have them yet you might not want them so I'll show you how to do this with other stuff too so what you're going to do first is smush your ink pads onto a non-stick sheet if you don't have a, a Teflon sheet like this you could use a piece of wax paper or um, a piece of freezer paper would work really well or even an old like plastic placemat whatever you have, whatever you're not worried about messing up and then you're going to spritz it with some water and basically what you're doing here is just making big old puddles of watercolor basically heck if you had watercolors you could probably do this too so you know make it work people make it work <laughs> use what you have and make it work and i'm just pressing my cardstock into that puddly mess and i it really bugs me when i see people just kind of wipe off their mat and just throw all that inky goodness away so what i like to do is just scrape up every last bit of ink that i can because i am so stingy and it's so pretty so i can't bear to waste it um i'm still kind of like experimenting the heck out of these ink pads and i just uh, I'm curious as to how long they'll go and I really don't want to waste any so I just like to sop up whatever I can. Um, you shouldn't have a muddy mess no matter what ink you work with at this point because we're using colors that are fairly close to each, each other on the color wheel. We have blues and greens. Of course we have a gray and a brown but that's not really going to make mud. They're going to kind of work together and be similar enough that we shouldn't have a problem. So the key here is to dry between layers. You can see here with the heat tool I am drying this and I also make sure I flip it over and I dry the back side of the paper too so that it gets nice and flat again. Now we're going to work on our second layer and what we're going to do is the same thing we just did. We're going to smoosh some brown ink only onto our mat and we're going to spritz it so we have these little droplets of yummy goodness and we're going to smoosh our paper into it. And this is going to give it a little bit of underlying subtle rust because if you've ever seen galvanized pails that are really old, even though they're galvanized, they'll still get little bits of rust and that's kind of what we're what we're going for here. And again, uh, you can spritz it with some water and that will reveal some lighter areas kind of coming up through that gives you that oxygen or even galvanized look so it's really you really can't do wrong with this and now I'm pressing some of the grayish color um, I think it's called ice spruce I think is the name of it but use a gray ink pad and um, I spritz that up press that onto my ink pad and then I'm gonna press my paper into that I did blot off the water that I just put on there because it just helps lift off some of the ink I think and make it a little bit lighter and so that gives us a little bit more of a um, kind of chalky oxidized look and we are going to dry this layer too so no matter what inks you're using if you dry between layers it's really going to control a lot of muddiness so you don't have to have these these are really awesome and fun but you can do that with this technique now something i want to tell you if you don't have these inks and you need that chalky look what i want you to do is smush a white pigment ink pad onto your mat add a little water to it and flick that on with a paintbrush that will give you a very similar look to the distress oxide inks and you probably already have the stuff if you don't have a white ink pad you can use uh, white watercolor or white gouache paint now, honestly, you could leave it like this. It's pretty and all, but if you want to give it a little bit of that patina look, grab your ink blending to uh, foam or makeup sponge or whatever you have and just kind of pounce on some of this pistachio color. That kind of sea foamy color gives you um, a little bit of a, of a patina look. And of course, if you're doing this with the ink pads you already have, you'd want to use pigment inks for this layer because you do want it to be a little bit opaque. I'm also putting in some of that broken china, which is kind of like a, it kind of almost looks aqua. So just go for pigment inks in those shades if that's what you have. Have if you don't have these distress oxide inks now I'm flicking it with some more water and that's gonna kind of what it does I think is separates the um, the opaque white pigment from the ink and helps it like rise to the surface and give you that oxidization it makes it almost a little lighter too so your colors will become a little more muted and it really shows when I tip it I think towards myself you can see it a lot better and now when I blot I'm not sure if it's lifting up some of that ink or if it's just drying it and that's why it looks lighter but you can kind of play with the amount of um, times you spray it to get the effect that you're going for. 
I really like the texture I have so far, but I wanted a little bit of metallic sheen to it. So I am using some acrylic inks. These are the Dr. P.H. Martin um, Spectralite. I think they're an acrylic ink. You could use acrylic paint with some water added to it, or you could smoosh an acrylic ink pad onto your nonstick mat and add a little water to it. Whatever you want to do to get that metallic sheen, your acrylic paint or acrylic ink is going to be a little bit more shiny for you, though. So to apply this ink, all I'm doing is wadding up a small piece of paper towel and just dipping it into the ink and then just pouncing it on. Remember, if you use um, a thick acrylic paint, just add a little water to it first and mix it up before you do this. The colors I'm using are nickel, and that's kind of like a warm silver. And um, then I've got silver, which actually looks more like a pearl. You can use whatever you want, but that's what I happen to have here. Now, I wanted to make sure that I got a little bit of that texture and color on every small bit of this paper because I'm going to be paper piecing with it and just using small amounts. So I added some water to the colors that I had left on my mat and I'm just flicking it onto the paper so that I get a nice overall um, shimmery um, effect all over it. I again dried my paper with the heat tool and at this point I thought it looked a little too new and shiny so I wanted to tone down some of the metallic ink. So to do that I simply took my sponge blending tool that I made the other day and pounced it in the brown ink and just started to um, kind of just pounce here and there on my paper where I thought I had a little bit too much of the silver ink. Now this ink is still going to be reactive with water so I thought I'd spritz a little bit with my sprayer. If you go real slow with these garden sprayers, this one's from the dollar store, um, you get really big droplets and uh, that's what I wanted. So I let that kind of sit for a second and then blotted it off with my paper towel and I'm really digging the effect that I'm getting here. Now you could leave it just like this but I thought you know there's one more thing I want to do and I, I pushed that brown ink pad onto the uh, surface again and I just added some water to it and decided to flick on some of that brown paint. I thought it would give me a really nice texture and again I want every bit of this paper to have really cool interesting texture because I'm going to be paper piecing with it and only using small little bits at a time. Of course, you know how I hate to waste a single drop of this ink. I then just kind of smooshed my paper upside down into the ink and dragged up everything that was left so that none went to waste. And then you simply want to dry this paper before you try to stamp on it. And uh, each time you dry it, like this is only going to take a couple seconds. So I really love the look of it and the paper just feels amazing. I had an idea to build a scene, a garden scene with today's project. So what I'm doing is stamping a wheelbarrow, a um, water bucket, and a milk can on this paper. And then I'm just going to simply cut each of these out. I'm using Ranger Archival ink because I know it's not going to um, smear on this kind of semi-glossy, semi-coated, very inky paper. Uh, so you just want to make sure you use something that's going to dry. You could also use Stazon for this if you don't have Ranger Archival, but I honestly hardly ever use stays on. I find it quite annoying because it seems like the pad is never juicy enough. So you can see when I tip that to the light, the um, wonderful designs I have, then you just got to let that dry before you cut it out. Otherwise, um, you could smear the ink and it will take longer because you do have paint on the surface. Now I've got a fresh piece of cardstock here and I am going to start stamping those images again how I want them. Now, when you're putting a scene together, you need to pay attention to scale. So the wheelbarrow is actually fairly small here and the watering can is the biggest element. So I need to put that watering can closer to the bottom of my paper in order for it to look like it's the right scale. If I had everything lined up on the same plane, then um, the wheelbarrow would look like a miniature. So that can is actually, in real life, it should be bigger than the watering pan, uh, pail. So I am putting it up higher in the scene so it looks like it's further away. So it's just the same thing if you draw or you paint, the things further away from you appear smaller. So when you have smaller objects, objects or smaller in scale objects, then you know they ought to be, you got to put them higher up in the paper so it pushes them back. And then with this wheelbarrow, I'm making sure that its wheels is higher, are higher up in the plane than the watering can and the pail, and I'm stamping it down. I don't have to mask because remember, we stamped these items again on the metallic paper, so we'll be able to like overlay them, glue them down after the fact, and it's going to be fine. It's going to look fantastic, and it saves us the work of masking, so win, win, win. I was curious to see if the Distress Oxides would work well with my blending brushes and color dusters, so I grabbed one and decided to give it a try. I figured, heck, if I don't like it, these wash, not a big deal. And they worked wonderfully. I got a nice soft blend, and um, I always find the brushes to work easier than foam when I'm blending, so I thought that was great. So I went ahead and put that right in the bottom of my panel, and remember, we are gluing down the metallic things we stamped out, so we do not need to worry about keeping anything precious or anything white. You just want to make sure that 
that over your watering can, over the wheelbarrow and over the milk jug that you have space to do your stamping because we're going to stamp with our little flowers and peg stamps um, above them. So you just want to make sure you're not going to have a bunch of green under there. So I decided to grab some of the broken china as well and I am just dusting that in from the top. I think I should have chosen a clean um, blending brush before I use this because I feel like um, the bristles were clumping a little bit here but still it gave me a nice soft effect and I really can't complain. I use my foam sponge daubers to add some shadow and some weight underneath each of the objects. I simply just kind of pounced on my color. That's how I like to use these a lot. Um, it's a great way to direct a little bit of color and it's soft and it just, I think it looks really nice. And now it's time to do some stamping. And I love projects like this because I don't have to mask or really worry too much about where I do my stamping because like I mentioned before, we're going to be cutting out the um, images again out of that metallic paper and we don't have to worry about any smudges or colors getting onto those objects. So I'm using a variety of different plants, different leaves, different flowers, and I'm just trying to keep in mind scale as I'm stamping. So if you notice that water bucket in front, it's got those really big petunias in there. Uh, so I wouldn't want to use those really big petunias in the wheelbarrow in back because that would mess up the scale. In the back one, I'm going to want to use smaller petunias to show that that is further away. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing scenic stamping. Things that are lower on your paper are going to be closer to the viewer. Things that are higher in the paper that are on the ground, that is, are going to be further away from the viewer. I'm basically packing in the foliage as close to the um, opening of the wheelbarrow as I can, and then I'll be popping the flowers in a little bit higher. I haven't talked much about the inks that I'm using for stamping. I am using some distress inks. The uh, lighter green color is a distress ink, but I'm also using some pigment inks I already had in my stash because pigment inks, just like the distress oxide inks, tend to be more opaque, meaning that if there's a little bit of background showing through, it's going to cover it up a little bit more. It has a little better hiding power. Same with chalk inks. So it's kind of fun to experiment with them if you're not used to um, stamping with those types of inks. I find that I can layer a lot better, and um, if I have already got a a little ink on the background, the, the stamping is just going to show up a little bit nicer. So just to let you know, the purple and dark green inks were my Versamark inks and the other ones were all Distress Oxide. Now if you have any gaps, any spots that look a little bare, use a light color such as yellow and a big lacy flower to fill in the gaps. That's what I'm doing with this big triple daisy stamp. It's uh, light and lacy enough that I can sneak it in wherever I want and it just seems to fill in and make it look like I don't, like I don't have any holes anywhere, which is just what I want it to do. One thing to note is that pigment ink dries slower than dye ink. So I'm leaving that panel alone, letting it dry fully while I cut out the stamped images from our metallic paper. I think they look great. Now you'll notice that I'm cutting some parts of the image off, like on this watering can, I cut the handle off because that's such a fine line that there's no point in me trying to cut around that stamped line. I'll just stick it down and that line that's on the background will be just fine. When I cut the wheelbarrow out, I am going to um, cut out the metal part and the uh, wooden handle that goes across, but I'm not going to cut the wheels or the, um, the legs out of the wheelbarrow. And then I'm just going to cut out the watering can or the milk can rather just plain. And then we'll simply glue everything down once it's all cut out. I decided to do a little detail coloring before I glued anything down and I took a black marker and just colored in the wheel of the wheelbarrow and then I took a gray marker to color in the legs of the wheelbarrow uh, because those are going to show and I thought that it would just look a little bit more realistic this way. I also decided to take an olive green marker and just kind of scribble in some shadow and some grasses under the watering cans, milk jug, and wheelbarrow. This will just give you those little um, definite blades of grass and just help the thing feel a little bit more painterly and um, realistic because you have a little shading there. And if you don't have markers, you can actually use watercolor paints and a fine brush. It'll work just as well. Use what you have or combine the different products to make it a little bit more interesting or more fun to create. Now I gotta be real with you, not every decision I make turns out to be fruitful. I thought, well, why don't I paint some of these flowers? And I turn this into a hot mess real fast. But don't worry, there's a way to solve every problem because every problem is just an opportunity, I think. And I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to do a little decoupage. 
So I stamped those petunias twice on a scrap of white paper and cut them out so I could glue them onto the panel uh, over the offending watercolor petunias. I also trimmed my panel a little bit smaller and inked the edges with brown and blue ink to make them uh, have a little bit more of a frame. And I think it's looking really nice now. I'm going to go ahead and glue down all of my metal pieces as well. And you can use whatever glue you have for this, but I do suggest something with a fine tip so you can get on all those little edges. Um, this glue that I'm using here is by Scotch, but uh, I actually, I don't, I, the glue is fine. I don't care for the applicator because it's really hard to squeeze, but that's ha that happens to be what I had on my desk and uh, that's what I'm going to use. And there, I think that looks really fantastic. And I think it looks really put together once you get all of those elements glued down. I chose a craft card base for this project and I made sure to cut it a little bit wider than I needed so I'd be able to punch a scallop border. And this uh, punch is by Stampin' Up and I'm not sure if it's still current but you could use any edge punch you liked or your decorative scissors. And then I simply glued down my um, panel onto the cardstock. Now I wanted to have a little room for a sentiment and some twine and that's going to be at the bottom of the card. This thank you sentiment is from one of the new sets from Rubber Stamp Tapestry that just came out with new um, unmounted sheets of sentiments and uh, they're really pretty and I love how they give a handwritten feel to your cards, especially if you don't like your handwriting. So that's kind of really fun to use. And then I used a sponge dauber to ink the edges of that little banner that I die cut with some of that same purple ink that I stamped with. It's just a quick subtle touch that looks great. Now I had some like of that same color purple baker's twine so I just simply wrapped it three times around the bottom of the card and tied the knot on the inside of the card and trimmed it close to the knot. And that's going to be fine for something like this. It's not going to take a lot of wear and tear. And then I adhered my sentiment to the front of the card. I just tried to not make it smack dab in the middle so it's slightly off centered. And then I just used a glue dot to stick a button on the flag. And I think a simple embellishment like this is all you really need with, um, with a card where you've put so much work into the inking and the stamping. I decided to do some highlighting with a white gel pen though because it is a really nice touch I think. I've been doing it a lot lately and I just think it really um, makes things sparkle a little bit. So I went on some of the edges of the metal cans and wagons and whatnot and just put a little uh, pop of color. One thing I did notice with the white gel pen and the Distress Oxide inks is that um, the ink bleeded, bled up through the gel pen ink. So after it dried I could see that um, my ink was almost kind of like a cream color which didn't bother me because this is kind of a rusty rustic look but it's something to think about if you're going to do this technique you might need to seal it first before you do the white gel pen or plan on doing a couple layers of gel pen so that you can kind of uh, get that bright white effect if that's what you desire. I also decided to use the white gel pen to brighten up the stripes in the um, small striped petunias in the back. I thought it really needed it because um, I did do some over stamping. Like I said, I didn't mask. I wasn't too careful. You don't have to do this. This was kind of an afterthought. Actually, a couple hours later, I thought, you know, I think that'd be kind of pretty. And so I did it. I also thought that I would grab some other colors of gel pens and kind of pop up some of the colors in this piece, such as the middle of flowers and um, anything else that I felt needed to be strengthened in this composition. Position. This card was so much fun to make and these techniques are so fun. I hope you give them a try. And if you need any of the supplies I used, please check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them at pegstamps.com. They have the full line of Tim Holtz Distressed Oxide inks as well as gel pens and of course your peg stamps. And if you're making a peg stamp order, you can save 20% with a coupon code Lindsay17. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you got some good ideas for your next card. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your crafty friends. Thank you so much for watching and until next time happy crafting